On February 1, 1960, four A&T students stood against all odds as they dared to stand up for their rights. Ezell Blair, Franklin McCain, Joseph McNeil, and the late David Richmond all sat down at a segregated lunch counter in downtown Greensboro. North Carolina A&T State University hosted a program to celebrate the 51st anniversary of the 1960 sit-in movement. Good morning, everyone. I am Brian Tigner, the Student Government Association Attorney General. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out to this event. Today we'll be having the laying of the moral wreath. This is to commemorate the life of the late Dr. David Richmond. This is an opportunity for us to reflect on the contributions that they've made to society. So again, I would like to thank everyone for coming out. First, we will have the laying of the wreath. Let us pray, please. The four men bowed their heads and stood under their own statue as one member of the Student Government Association said a prayer of comfort. Everyone took time to stop and reflect on the great historical event that took place so many years ago. As the university choir sung A&T's alma mater. Jabril Kazan, formerly Azil Blair, humored the children in the audience with an old wise tale. Then the students had their own time to shine as they showed their singing skills. Each of the Aggie four men, including David Richmond Jr., the son of late David Richmond, gave a few encouraging words. The floor was opened up to anyone that had questions. By the end of 1960, the sit-in movement had sparked the beginning of a countrywide epidemic, reaching at least 250 cities, causing over 400 sit-ins around the country. These four brave men have impacted the lives of many people, but they want people to remember that the fight is not over. You can't let just this, this be nostalgia. You have to take something away from here and resort to some kind of action. You have to address concerns, not just your own concerns, but the concerns of the people who can't address things for themselves. I always have the feeling that if you've got a concern and it's not being addressed, by God, you need to address it yourself. And sometimes you have to go to extraordinary means to get ordinary results. I'm Lauren Branch, bringing you the story.